Hello guys, good evening. This is Life Issue, this is Blessing. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. Um, I want to talk about this Kama Bill because it's been a talk of the nation. Nigeria has been talking about it throughout today. And so many people have sent this question to me and asking me, what do I think about the Kama Bill? Now, I'm going to talk about this bill in the sense that I live in the Western world. I have traveled, at least I've been to most continents, and I know what pertains in other parts of the world. Now, so I'm not talking about it because it's Nigeria. Let's look at this bill based on what is happening in other parts of the world. Let's even look at it from the church history. Where did Christianity come from? Who brought Christianity to Nigeria? Why are pastors talking about this bill? What is in this bill that me and you as you know, churchgoers, have we actually taken time to read this bill for ourselves? You know, when I was, I was having a discussion with my friend this evening and she was talking about, oh, how this bill is so bad, how they want to come after the churches, how they want to kill the churches, how they're persecuting the churches. And I was like, have you, as a church goer, read, have you actually gone to read that bill? Have you taken time to read the bill, bill for yourself? Now, if you haven't read the bill, I want you to actually ask yourself a question. Are you educated? Because I'm not getting why people who are educated, who should know better, have not taken time to read the bill. So let me tell you something. Every churches in the Western world is regulated. Churches are like NGOs. So you have Redeemed Church in Nigeria, you have Christ Embassy, you have uh, Winners, you have all these churches that you have in Nigeria. They are UK branch, their American branch are regulated. So you need to get that. that when you talk about this regulation, it's not about the government persecuting the church. What the government are asking is transparency. Remember, me and you go to church. We're asked to pay for this, pay for that, pay for that. Almost every month there is something to pay. Do you understand? You have to pay for this. I mean, there's, yeah, some of us give because we want those things that they are telling us that they are using that money for, for it to be accomplished. But can I ask you a question? Have you ever seen the church account? Have you actually gone to the office and they've given you something to actually prove that the money that you are paying is what is being used for? I mean, <laughs> I know that sometimes, yeah, we look at government as, oh, government, they hate us. They don't like us. They want, you know, they're after our pastors. But sometimes there are some laws that need to be in place. Me and you, last year, we saw the many affluence that was being shown to us by our pastors, by our men of God. Some of them were showing us their houses. They are showing us them being on private jets, trotting the world, you know, living a exotic life. Me and you cried out in social media. We wanted a little bit of sanity in our churches. We wanted our pastors to know that some of the things that they were doing were actually making people stop being Christians. They were not accountable. So the government actually brought this regulation. Let's even, I know some of you haven't even gone to look at the regulation by yourself. So let me look, let me show you what it is because I had to like research it a little bit. So I'm going to screen share. Now I'll put my glasses on. I'm going to screen share. Yeah. And I'm going to show you what this regulation is all about because, you know, we come and we are, we, are, we talk and talk and talk and talk, but we're actually not. Um... Okay. So this is the regulation and I'm going to read this, the second line sentence. It, the conscious provision of the new law in section 839 
one and eight, which provides that the Registrar General of the Corporate Affairs Commission and a supervising minister will strictly regulate religious bodies and non-governmental organization. Now, I want you to listen. They said religious bodies and non-governmental. is not about churches. It's about all religious bodies. So even the native doctors, even the Moscow, even the Hindus, or any religious bodies in Nigeria will be regulated. Now, let's go forward. The law also carries enormous power to suspend the trustees of this group and appoint an interim manager or managers to coordinate the affairs where it is reasonable belief that there have been an untoward conduct of mismanagement. Pause. Biko, what I want to ask is, did you guys see what they said? They just don't come. They, they are they not saying they are just going to come. They said they will come when there is a misconduct, a mismanagement, and when there is a fraudulent things happening in the churches. And what they are looking at is desirable for the purpose of public interest. I'm going to stop there. Because if you've not seen this legislation and, you know, your, your pastors are talking and, you know, everybody's like, oh, they want to come after us. It's not about churches. It's about religious organization. It is happening all around. It has been there. I mean, it's not something new. In America, before you start a church, you must have a license. Before you even preach, you must have a license. The same thing with the UK. You must have a license. So it has got nothing to do with religious body or pastors being persecuted. What the government are saying is if there is a fraudulent, remember they used the word fraudulent. They did not say they will come after churches and close the churches. No, it's not what they're saying. Paraventure, there is a whistleblower who is saying that the pastors or somebody is mismanaging the fund or misappropriating the fund, the government will have to do something. Now, I have watched a lot of video about this, you know, talk, and people are saying that the government will appoint a Muslim to come and head a church. And, you know, it, I'm like, oh, my God, there is no way. There is no way in that regulation that says that, a Muslim will be appointed to a church is not there. So we, we all have, listen, I know Nigeria, we all say Nigeria is a bad, you know, is, is this and that, but we still have a little bit of law in Nigeria. We still have our learned colleagues that can, you know, take our case to court and people are still winning in court. You cannot bring someone who is a Muslim to come and be they're not saying remove the pastor there's no way in that you know i was reading i'm going to show you guys what why i had to do this video because i i read i was watching two video and i told myself you know what people my people perish because of you know lack of you know knowledge so i was um my husband sent me a test let me just see what he said okay so so i was you know watching um two videos this evening that made me have to do this. I was like, you know, I have to do this video because people are getting all these things. You know, their pastors are giving their members the wrong information about this bill. There is no way in the bill that said they will put a Muslim to come and head a church. They didn't even say they will take away your pastor. They are talking about the board of trustees, not the pastor itself. They didn't say they're going to you know, bring somebody else to come and be the pastor of your church or the B G GO or the general overseer. The general overseer most times don't run the church. You have an accountant. You have your board of trustees. You know, what is that in Nigerian churches is that the board of trustees are made up of the pastor's wife, the pastor's brother, the pastor's sister, or pastor brother-in-law. So that is maybe why all this issue is coming up. Anyway, let me show you the video to School of Thought about this. And remember, I told you when I started this that this thing is applicable 
around the world. I'm, I'm even happy sometimes that we're discussing this because we had to discuss this. People are talking about this. So let me show you the video that made me do this. Um... Okay, so guys, watch this. The first one is, um... yeah, this man of God, listen to what he has to say. Well, that's a serious problem that is on now in Nigeria. Listen very well. The Nigerian government enacted a law to put a closer regulation on the church or churches. And one of the regulations they have enacted is that the leadership of the church is subject to change by the government. The trustee of any church, the government can wake up for any reason they will give and change them. And they have the power to appoint new trustees. And so everywhere now, the first person that reacted was Oyedepo. And then others had, but there's a serious problem that is on now in Nigeria. Listen very well. The Nigerian government enacted a law to put a closer regulation on the church or churches. And one of the regulations they have enacted is that the leadership of the church is subject to change by the government. The trustee of any church, the government can wake up for any reason they will give and change them. And they have the power to appoint new trustees. And so everywhere now, the first person that reacted was Oyedepo. And then others. Are, but as I say, okay, so um, sorry, guys. I'm going to start. I think. Listen. I'm going to do the screen share again because it keeps um. Because you need to listen to what this man said because he made a lot of sense and we need to listen to him. So that's him talking. But that's a serious problem that is on now in Nigeria. Listen very well. The Nigerian government enacted a law to put a closer regulation on the church or churches. And one of the regulations they have enacted is that the leadership of the church is subject to change by the government. The trustee of any church, the government can wake up for any reason they will give and change them. And they have the power to appoint new trustees. And so everywhere now, the first person that reacted was Oyedepo. And then others but that's a serious problem that is on now in Nigeria. Okay. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop here because um, I'm going to show you guys what's. All right. Now, this is what I'm saying. There's, there's a lie going on. The government did not say for any reason. It, it was not what the government said. The government specifically said for fraudulent reason. So when I saw that video, I was really like, what are we pastors telling our members? Why are we not telling them the truth? The government said for fraudulent reason, for misconduct, not for any reason at all. So we need to actually be telling our members the truth. We need to actually be saying it the way it is. Because as somebody just said, a government, sorry, let me just show you. Say, a government that is not transparent cannot come and seek transparency in the church. 
The hidden agenda cannot be ignored. This is Nigeria. Yeah, I get it. But the point is, we need transparency in the church. I mean, I mean Victor, we don't we really need transparency in the church. Anybody wakes up now and the person is a pastor. How many churches do you have in your streets? Let's be frank. Somebody just wake up in the morning. The person is called. Do you know how many people have broken up from churches because they want to open their own church and make the same money that the GOs are making? Churches have become, you know, like, uh, what would I call it now? A, a banking transaction. And people and the government is saying we need some sanity. Now, what we should be talking about as Christian is clarity on what they intend to do, how they, how they intend to execute it, how they intend to put the trustee. Are the trustees going to be a member of the church? Are the trustees going to be, you know, dickens and dicknesses when they do whatever they are doing? But do we need a little bit of transparency? Me for, I think we do. I think it's about time Pentecostal, churches in nigeria have a little bit of transparency let me even ask a question why are the catholic church not glamouring why are the anglican church the um presbyterian the assembly of church of god church why are they not you know talking about this because they have system in place there is already an established system in place so until until we understand that listen yeah in a system where the GO is the founder of the church, the treasury is the founder of the church, everybody in the trustee are all related to the pastor who will never get transparency. So I know that, you know, we are getting a lot of things from our pastors. They are talking about these. They are telling us, you know, but what I want us to actually do is do your own research. Ask yourself a question. How is this thing happening in other country? Don't say, oh, Nigeria. Nigeria does have rule of law sometimes. When you go to court, you get you get your you get you get the case out. I'm not gonna, you're not gonna tell me that Nigeria, all the whole uh, Supreme Courts and all the courts are all you know under the influence of the government. I don't think so. So we need I'm gonna close this discussion by showing you another clip from Apostle Suleiman. Let's listen to what he has to say. No, 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 stop. Sorry. Apostle Suleiman's clip. I want to show you Apostle Suleiman's clip. I'm not able to get Apostle Suleiman's clip. But that's a serious problem that is on now. Sorry, Nigeria. guys. Listen very well. The Nigeria. All right, sorry. I'm trying to get the one that I really need you guys to listen to. And that one is the Apostle Suleiman's clip. And hopefully I'll be able to get it now. Yes. So can you listen to this and then... I, I was, you know, people have been asking me to talk about this Kama, Kama bill. You know the Kama bill that's going on now? That they said they can... The government can just give the church a board of trustee. They can they can suspend some. And I said, why would why would like talk over nonsense? The government that will change the board of trustee in this ministry, the, that government has not been born. This ministry, come now, come and do it. No, no, come and change. No, come and change now. Is karma law? Is karma B? Is karma? What kind of stupid? Have you finished managing Ministry of Agric? Have you finished managing Ministry of Work? In this country, Ministry of Work is not working. They say it's church. Come and try it. There are some things that don't make sense now. I, I was, you know, people have been asking me to talk about this karma, karma bill. You know, the karma bill that's going on now. Okay, that's so. The government can just give the church a board. All right, so this is what Apostle Suleiman had to say. But, I mean, if you want to watch the full clip, you need to go to my Instagram for you to watch the full clip. But at the end of the day, Apostle Suleiman did agree that there needs, there needs to be a transparency 
in our churches. And that is one of the things I loved about what he had to say. You know what, yeah? There's some. There's a way we can actually talk about the government. I mean, my, one, one thing I want to take out of all this is that in addressing this, me and you who are churchgoers need to go and read the law ourselves. Let's go and read the law. Digest the law yourself. It's not they said, they did not say. Actually know what is what is said in that law, in that bill. Because some of the things that are being said were not said there. Like I said before, the government did not say they will put a Muslim or they will take the church leader. No, they did not say that. What they're talking about, the trustee of the church. And also, is not just because of any allegation. They made mention of fraudulent allegation mismanagement. And these are things that me and you were talking about throughout last year. It was on social media. We were castigating and talking and saying how you know, churches are, you know, pastors are showing their wealth, how they don't care. Now the government have heard and they are trying to do something. And yet we are also the one talking about the government. I don't know what we want, but at the end of the day, we all agree that with the amount of churches that are springing up in our country, with the amount of fake churches happening, I know people will say, don't talk about pastors. Everybody is a pastor. Don't talk about anointed man of God. You know what? I don't believe everybody is anointed. Me, myself, I'm also anointed. I actually believe that some people are opening churches just for the money. And what we're saying is, if you are a man of God, if you are actually your ministry, you know that you are there to save soul and you are there to preach the word, there, shouldn't not, there should not be anything wrong with wanting transparency. There shouldn't be anything wrong with you wanting to know to have your fund managed properly. And if there is a whistleblower or somebody said something is happening, remember, the only way the government will come in is if they find out something or if they know something or if somebody tells them something. And it has to be somebody in your church, in your trustee or in your administration that will tell them. It's not, you're, you're not, you're not running a company. So it's not as if like you have um, a company board that, you know, you are doing, no, you are doing, no. So it has to be somebody in the church that will tell or somebody that will leak your secret that will say that you are mismanaging the, the company fund. Now, I'm going to say this, yeah. It's, it's not just happening in Nigeria. I don't know why geos and, you know, people that founded the church, they code onto it as if it's a, you know, it's a personal property. Now, I'm going to end with this story of a church in America. This church was founded by somebody. Now, this is my email, and it's a CNN News. Now, this is um, Jerry Fowell's junior. So, the father founded the Liberty University Church, and this church that was founded by the father he had to step down. He had to step down. They made him step down, even though this church was founded by his father. So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, in America, this thing is being done already. When you mismanage, when you rape, when you do something bad, you need to step down. In Nigeria, no. A pastor is accused of rape. A pastor is accused of mismanagement. A pastor is accused of a lot of things. And the pastor hold on to that body, hold on to that church because it is his personal property. And the government is saying, no, it's about time churches give account of their action. Pastors or board of trustees or the management of the church need to account for their action. And I think it's a good thing. That's my thought about this. I know we are still having the debates. People are making are still making the debate. But what I'm going to say is, before you start talking about, oh, they want to take our church, or oh, they want to destroy churches, or oh, they're persecuting churches, what I want you to do is, you go and research what the government is saying, and let's just, you know, uh, somebody says something. Nigeria should not be lawless. There are Christian bodies governing. Christian bodies governing is can working. Can is political. We know that. We all know that can is political. 
can is has become a political association can actually is doesn't go to churches some churches only are not even member of can i mean victor you're posting something but both of us know that some churches are not member of can so i mean i'm gonna you know end this discussion because it's a very very dicey discussion i'm gonna even i'm even gonna get into trouble for talking about this but you know what i've got i've come to a point in my um social life or my vlogging life where i have to address topic even if it has to do with my faith i'm, I'm not going to be you know shied away or pushed away and told you can't talk about this because you know it has to do with churches or no 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 if i have to stand in what i believe in and i believe that the fact that churches are being asked to be accountable is not wrong if you are saying because it's happening in Nigeria, because Nigeria is lawlessness, it doesn't mean that we should not actually have this law in place. What we should be thinking about is how can we make sure that this law is implemented in fairness? So what we should be asking the government to do is, is to clarify, clarify the way that we implement this law and not say that they should abolish it. No, they shouldn't abolish it because there are some churches that are being sprung up and pastors are actually feasting on people's, um, what will I say? <laughs> I don't know how to put it. I'm not going to say tight and offering because this, Nigerians are cutting to a point where they don't even pay the tight anymore. And they just give what they want to give. And they don't even care if you, if you shout and shout and shout. They don't even want to give anymore. Not after this COVID and what they have passed through. People just know that at the end of the day, <laughs> the church and the government don't really care is all man to themselves. That's where Nigerians are at this point. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me this evening. I'm always on every evening, bringing the latest news, trying to discuss the latest things that's happening. And please, if you want to come on my show, please just drop a comment and I will bring you to the show. Thank you, Victor, for putting your own comments. That is your own belief. And it is good that we have this discussion. Now, if you've not joined my YouTube channel yet, please, please join my YouTube channel and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye.